Today, when we see a helicopter rise gently from the ground, hover gracefully for a moment, then move off easily in directional natural. But it was not always so simple. The early designers of helicopters encountered many difficulties before they were able to get one of their craft off the ground. And they had still more difficulties to overcome before they were able to control its flight. One of their major problems was dissymmetry of lift, which means simply that in directional flight, rotor blades always tend to exert more lift during the advancing half of their cycle of rotation than they do during the retreating half. The result, of course, is an unfortunate tendency for a helicopter to turn over on its back. The cause of dissymmetry of lift is fairly simple. Lift, as we know, is produced by the passage of air over an airfoil. The air passing under the airfoil is compressed, forming a high pressure area. The air passing over is accelerated, forming a semi-vacuum or low pressure area. This results in the creation of the force called lift. The faster the air passes over the airfoil, the greater is the lift produced. All other factors being equal, lift will vary as the square of the velocity. In a helicopter, of course, the rotor blades act as airfoils to produce lift. And the faster the air passes over the blades, the greater is the lift which is produced. Now suppose the rotor of our helicopter is revolving so that the tips of the blades are traveling at a speed of 350 knots. During vertical flight, of course, the blades will produce the same amount of lift at all times, since the air will pass over them at the same speed during their entire cycle of rotation. But the moment the helicopter starts to move in any direction horizontally, a dissymmetry of lift is produced. That is, the blade advancing through the unshaded area will begin to produce more lift than the blade retreating through the shaded area. If the helicopter is moving forward at 50 knots, then the tip of the advancing blade will be moving through the air at 350 plus 50, or 400 knots. Likewise, the retreating blade will be moving through the air at 350 minus 50, or 300 knots. Since the lift produced by an airfoil varies as the square of the velocity, it is apparent that the lift produced by the advancing blade is considerably greater than that produced by the retreating blade. And this dissymmetry of lift, if nothing were done to counteract it, would soon result in the helicopter turning over on its back. In order to prevent this from happening, some means must be employed which will permit the advancing blade and the retreating blade to produce equal amounts of lift. In most modern helicopters, this is accomplished by flapping. The advancing blade is allowed to flap up, while the retreating blade is allowed to flap down without changing pitch angle. If the advancing blade were not allowed to flap up, it would follow this path. And the relative wind would be from this direction. However, when the advancing blade is allowed to flap up at a high angular velocity, there is a change in the direction of the relative wind. This new path taken by the blade through the air results in a smaller angle of attack. A smaller angle of attack results in a reduction of the amount of lift. Thus, simply by allowing the advancing blade to flap up, we reduce the amount of lift which it produces. It is this difference in the relative wind caused by the flapping action which reduces the amount of lift. Meanwhile, on the other side of the helicopter, we increase the amount of lift produced by the retreating blade. Let's see how that is done. 
if the retreating blade were not allowed to flap down, this would be its path. And the relative wind would be from this direction. The relative wind is always opposite to the rotational path of the blade. Now, as the retreating blade is allowed to flap down, there is a change in the direction of relative wind, which results in a larger angle of attack. It is this difference in the relative wind caused by the flapping action which increases the amount of lift. Thus, by decreasing the amount of lift produced by the advancing blade and increasing the amount produced by the retreating blade, the two sides are brought into equilibrium. In fully articulated rotor systems, freedom to flap is made possible by a hinge near the root of each rotor blade. In the semi-rigid type of rotor system, freedom to flap is made possible by the teeter-totter action of the rotor head. As one blade flaps up, the other flaps down. Since the forces involved cause one blade to rise by an amount equal to the fall of the other, the seesaw mount or semi-rigid rotor construction poses no problem. No matter which mechanical means is used to permit the flapping action, the blades will follow the same path and produce the same result, an equalization of lift. Now, by the use of the cyclic control, the pilot can vary the amount of lift produced by the advancing and retreating blades and can change the attitude of the rotor disc at will. By changing the attitude of the disc, he can maintain the desired attitude of the helicopter. Dissymmetry of lift, then, is prevented by changing the angle of attack of the rotor blades to equalize the lift produced. And it is only when this has been accomplished that a helicopter is able to fly with stability in directional flight.